what's going on guys welcome back to the channel so in today's video i'm going to be building a very affordable skate for lots of you you want to get into the hobby but you worry about costs now ignoring the light in this build because it's expensive light it'll work with a cheap one as well though but quite a few of you are telling me you can't afford to get the aquascaping rocks and woods for your tank you know especially when you're just starting out and giving it a go for the first time well in a planted tank you're going to have plants of course so today i'm going to try and do a really cool skate for a better fish in a 30 centimeter nano cube something everyone can sort of afford and find a space for we're going to be just using the plants and hopefully build like a really cool looking scape for the better fish with just a few plants i'm going to try and stick to as small amount as possible but i know what i'm like sometimes you just need to add tweaks here and there but most of the plants you're going to see in the build come from one pot so it shouldn't be a huge expense for you so this is the aquarium i'm talking <laughs> ember's going to be in on the action this whole build aren't you look at my massive head <laughs> <laughs> hilarious fish um what was i saying yeah this is the cube aquarium so it's 30 centimeters 30 centimeters 30 centimeters because it's a cube obviously <laughs> so this is one of the few tanks i've got with like an expensive light this is a twin star light absolutely amazing anything twin star make is just good isn't it um you can see the tank's been fully neglected i used to have my better fish mike in here but since he passed away like six months ago uh, he was old by the way like I, I had him fully grown and i had him for two years so we've got some really nice java ferns growing in here actually look little baby ones i want to save all of these not for this setup but just because they're good to have that filter is actually pretty decent although at the moment you wouldn't think so it's not even in there properly but it is working so i will be using that one so yeah we've got a good light we've got a good filter there's a heater there should i choose to use it i mean i, I don't need the heater i have that back from when i used to have all of my tanks in my shed in the garden but now i just heat the whole room so none of the tanks actually require any heat as well apart from the discus one because you know they just they'd like their temperature to be like a bath apparently <laughs> Anyway, first thing I need to do is take out all these plants that I want to use. Now, a really good tip for you guys, something that I found that works amazing with Java ferns, take them out, put them in a bowl with some water, and just let the ambient light in the room grow them. Like, if I stick... I'm just flicking water everywhere. If I stick them in a bowl now and just leave them for like a month or so, all of these will be looking absolutely fantastic for new setups. So that's what I'm going to do. There we go, Java ferns out. Now the rest is just a bit of like scraggly old Java moss. I can just bin all of that. And there's some big stones in there, take those out. And then I'm gonna reuse most of the gravel actually. So quite a few of you guys have been asking me how I get stains out of a tank when I clean it out like this. This is the key to it. A little, I think it's a paint scraper or a gl glass scraper, I guess. Well, <laughs> it's for glass. You can buy like little packs of blades that go with it blade <laughs> i'll leave a link to it in the description but you can probably pick it up at a local diy store as well it's it just works so well i mean i know people use like the citric acid method or you know lemon and whatever this is just so simple you just scrape it hose down the glass wipe it with a piece of kitchen towel paper towel um, and then you're done that's it you don't have to worry about elbow grease or anything like you don't even have to press hard and it all comes off no matter what it is yeah so it's as easy as this so i like to just lubricate the blade and then, what's this, look. See, just run it backwards and forwards a few times. And there we go, look, that area of the glass looks absolutely brand new. So the tanks will sit up clean, ready to go, but it's a little bit of a tight area here for actually building it and, and you know filming everything. So I'm gonna set up a little production area over here. <laughs> Get me with my production area. Who do I think I am? <laughs> There we go look at that that's a classy looking setup right i mean obviously it's going to be like that's expensive light but you don't need to use this expensive light though it worked just as well with a cheap one you know like for instance so that's 30 centimeters i think this is like 35 anyway so this is a really cheap budget light packs out enough more than enough to grow plants so there are options is what i'm saying it just so happens though that I happen to have that awesome twin star light, so I'm going with that. <laughs> Be silly not to use it, wouldn't it? Right, it's time to get our nutrient layer in. For this, I'm going to go for my garden soil. I've still got loads left, would you believe it or not? Last time I made a batch, I just I just made loads. Uh, let me just roll a clip of me preparing it. 
so this is some old vintage phone footage guys of me getting some soil it's really simple just pull up some of the grass or something this is actually in a completely barren area up around the back of my house there's no fertilizers or pesticides or anything in this area so we're all good all you need to do is dig out a little bit of the topsoil not the stuff underneath the topsoil because there's barely nutrients there it's the topsoil the stuff the grass is growing in once you've got enough and you really don't need a huge amount lay it out on a baking tray and remove as much of the sort of twigs and things like that as you can by hand don't worry about it too much just anything that you can see that's obvious next we need to put it on a baking tray and put it in your oven when your significant other is not not in the house. <laughs> the chances are they're not as into this hobby as you are and they're gonna find it pretty weird slash disgusting. <laughs> Once the soil's dry, we can take it out. I mean, it normally takes about an hour or so and then we can crush it up. Now, back when I made this video, I didn't have a pestle and mortar, so I just used the next best thing, which is a bowl and a big rock. But it does the job, doesn't it? So bash everything up as best you can, small particles, and then just put it for a sieve and that'll take out any of the stones and any more of the sort of dried twigs and that kind of thing. And it's as simple as that, guys. You can make up as much as you want. It's free and, you know, it's good. Obviously, some topsoils are better than others, so it might be best to add in some other nutrients as well if you have them. More on that now. I'm also gonna add the API root tabs in there now. I'm just gonna crush them down and just sprinkle them in the bottom just to ensure we've got absolutely everything we need for the plants. Right, here's my dried out garden soil. So I've got loads there, see? I'm probably gonna use most of that, but I'm gonna pour it into this little tub first. Ah, use it all. <laughs> Nutrient rich. Okay, then I've got some of my uh, soil here that I took out at the start. I'm gonna mix a little bit in with that uh, soil there, just because I'm worried about it sort of compacting and going a bit weird. So if we like combine it with a little bit of gravel and put that as our base layer, and then we could put clean gravel on top of it. Oh, we have got some good levels of nutrients there. Now, some of you might want to just use that scraper thing or I don't know some flat edge a card a credit card or something just to bring this away from the edge but I quite like seeing all the different layers and seeing if the roots are going down into it so I'm just going to leave it at the front just just another bit of interest for me in the whole tank now on top of that I can put all of this sand and gravel I'm probably going to mix it up a little bit more though because it's not very consistent is it there although saying that actually on my previous setup with one of these hang on two secs Yeah, so if you have a look here on this setup, this is just a no filter sort of vase and you can see I've done the same sort of thing here and that at the bottom is the soil layer and then there's a little tiny thin band of sand I used to cap it and then I'll put the more coarse gravel on top. I think I'm just going to do that again, a little sprinkler of sand. It seems to have worked really well. This is now getting on for a month old, um, three and a half weeks, something like that and the plants are growing absolutely fantastic. So yeah, I'm just going to cap it a little bit of sand. Yeah, so the reason that I am capping this guys is so that I'm just ensuring that I'm locking down fully all this nutrient layer. So because there's so many nutrients in this base layer, we don't want that getting into the water column really easily. I mean, it will, it will do in a sort of sense, but it, it won't be in there really quickly. Otherwise, it's going to cause a ton of algae. You know, nitrates are going to shoot up, nitro, everything will be bad. So you just got to keep it sort of locked down. So I'm just doing a thin little layer, not too much. I'm going to put about... I don't know, five millimetres across the whole lot. You know, you can see there, look, I'm just, just a little light sprinkling, covering most of it. And that right there should be enough. There we go, there's a few bits poking through, but that's just coarse gravel. And then on top of that, we can put our proper sort of planting layer. I'll start at the back, then I can sort of push it forwards, and it won't disturb all the layers. So quite often when I'm creating a setup, I say to you guys to bank the soil upwards to add a sort of sense of depth to the scape. Well, I'm not doing that on this one because it's all going to be plants. I'm going to try and keep to a sort of a small number of species as I can. I'm aiming for two, 
but it might be free, so don't quote me on that. But I'm gonna fill it up with water now because I just like planting when there's water in there for stem plants. You can just see how they're sitting straight away. I find it so much easier and it gives the best sort of end effect. I don't know what that means. <laughs> There we go, looking clean. Right, let the fun begin. So I'm gonna do some planting. Obviously that's gonna stir up the sand a bit and it's gonna make the water a little bit murky, but not a problem. Once we finish, we can just do nearly 100% or 90% water change. It'll be nice and clear again. So I've decided on the planting. The first plant going in is this massive Hygrophila compactor. Two reasons, one, it looks so, so good. And two, it's getting too big for the foreground of the discus tank. So it'd be nice to take the trimmings, use them elsewhere and let it grow back even bigger. The second plant's probably gonna be Lindophila, and the third are gonna be the Rotala Green. Now don't hold me to just those three because once you get them in the tank, you might find that you need something else, something small, hopefully not. If I can stick to three plants, I get 20 MD points. Come on, I deserve it. <laughs> First of all, let's get this plant trimmed and planted in the new tank. So here they are, look, what I did was I trimmed different lengths. We've got the tallest going to the shortest, and that's so that I've got a way of placing them in the aquarium now. Tallest at the back, obviously, not right at the back. I'm gonna come about there, the tall one, and then obviously the smaller ones come gradually in, in the foreground, and then it should look good straight away. Fingers crossed, anyway. There we go, but looking pretty good so far. A bit misty, so it's gonna get better. And also the plants are all doing sort of like that and that. So they'll all stand up as well eventually and, and be straight up. But I did manage to do it. I managed to stick to the three plants, Lindophila, Rotala, and the Hygrophila Compactor. And I left that little sort of trailing gap there. I just think it added some, some interest rather than just being completely square on at the front there. Now it's time to fit our filter, which at the moment, this area is such a mess. Whenever I'm doing any sort of tank building, everything goes here until the end. <laughs> but anyway, look, this is the filter. It's so grubby, it needs to clean up. But that'll be good as new in no time. So that's the filter installed, looking really good. But the problem is, is because we've got stem plants right beneath it, if I leave it like that, then it's gonna just flow into them, push them all down, they're gonna look absolutely ugly. So I like to put this little plastic scoop underneath, and then that means that all the water just skims along the surface nicely, comes down the front glass, goes back, and just creates that cool circular motion that keeps the water moving and all the detritus off the ground and everything, and you know, it just keeps it all really nice and clean. So let me put that in now. So this is crazy simple to do. All you need to do is get a plastic bottle, now try and get one that's sort of flat and smooth like mine. Cut the bottom and top off so you're left with like a strip and then you just need to cut that in half and then you've basically got a semicircle. Is that how you'd best describe it? I don't know. <laughs> and then you just fold over one of the edges and then that's the bit that will slot nicely on the rim of the tank. All you've got to do is lift up the filter, slot it in underneath and then the weight of the filter itself will keep it locked on. The water then flows over the edge, scoops up onto the ramp, and then just skims along the top of the water. Absolutely perfect. And this is awesome as well because there's a better going in this tank and it just means that the flow is kind of diffused and not just blasting in. There we go, look, that's working a treat. None of the stems being touched. And it's just skimming along the front, swoops back down and around, perfect. Right, <laughs> okay, okay, I know I said no more than the three plants, but look, look, I've got an idea. Now, you know, I think you'll agree with me as well. Feel like that back area at the top there needs something thin coming up. I like Ballison area, but not because that gets way too big. I'm thinking I can use some sag that I've got in one of my other tanks. Follow me. So this is my Amazon Aquarium. Many of you know it. It's got some absolutely awesome fish in here. Look at those Colombian tetras. Look at you. Look at you. Anyway, yeah. So I'm thinking, look, I've got so much of this sag here. 
a couple of pieces of the longer stuff from the back there just in that background area i think will look so good i'm just gonna put it in and see if it works if it doesn't i can take it out but i think it will So we are nearly there. There's just one more thing we need to do, and that's provide some cover on the surface by using floating plants. <laughs> okay, so that's five plants now. Well, it's not really a plant, is it? It is a plant, but it's not a plant you plant. You can give me the salvinia. I'm putting salvinia on the surface. It helps to purify the water, filter the water, and it also provides a cover for the fish. That's what I'm saying, because better fish don't really like a lot of light. They're okay with a decent amount, but like not blasting in. I mean, it won't hurt it, but it's not really where they're from. So we want to make them more comfortable and it's just good for water quality in general. I promise you one day I will stick to two plants. So we need to get the Salvinia. Now that's all stored in Studio 2. Okay, here we go. Beneath the Amazon tank. This is where I grow most of it. I have to scoop out half of this every single week as well. So yeah, all I need is just about a handful, not too much. It grows in no time, you see, and this actually pulls nitrates and that out of the water. As it spreads, you take out half, so you're actually exporting waste, you know, from your from your aquarium, which is ideal. And then in you go. Now, another good thing about this filter that I've done with that scoop is that it actually stops the uh, the overflow from pushing the salvinia underneath the water all the time. Watch as it comes closer. Please don't do it now that I've said that. So it's coming close, coming close. Oh, actually, it's being stopped by that piece of... Uh, there we go, let's have a look now. Look at that, see? And then it just gently pushes it along. Ideal. Right, guess what? We are fish ready. Now, the fish I'm going to be putting in this is from a setup I did eight, nine months ago, I think. It's the better piece of the aquarium. Well, soon I'm going to be completely redoing that scape, so I need to move the fish out. And what better comfortable home in the meantime for my better fish, Phantom? And here is the scape look. Plants still growing well. Plants inside the aquarium growing a bit too well. But here is Phantom down here. Now, this actually quite accurately represents the sort of places these guys are from. They're from like rice paddy fields and small like streams where everything's all jumbled in and that. He finds his little paths around and that, but he most of the time he spends in this area here. He'll come across there in a minute because he think I'm gonna feed him now. But yeah, it's his home. There's loads of space. It doesn't look like there's any space, does it? But they find little channels and everywhere to go and absolutely love it, to be honest. But yeah, really, really good looking fish, isn't he? So he's coming out. This whole thing's gonna be changing to something so, so cool. I'm not sure when, but soon. <laughs> there we go, look. He's in his little playground. Let's go put you in your new home. And in you go then, little buddy. Now we don't have to worry about the temperatures being different because they're both the same. The room is heated, you see, so any sort of water is the same temperature. Look at him, looking great. So hopefully you can see now why I went for just green plants, because I knew I was putting Phantom in, who is properly sort of red and orange. He's a placat type of uh, better fish. Look at him, look at his, what I love about him is little eyes. I'll oh, come back. You can see he's a little bit stressed at the moment, because he's clamping up slightly. Um, he'll be all right in a minute.
Thank you.